let's have a play with the number 95 scroller box. In this video we'll be getting into some of those tips and tricks as featured in this month's zine. And this month we'll be creating something using a technique called negative painting, featured just here. I'll be using the paper that was featured inside this month's box. This scroller box watercolour paper pad is great for all types of wet medium, making it the perfect paper to do some artwork on today. I've grabbed a few extra things like my handy jam jar, some clean water to paint with, a sponge, eraser, pencil, and something round to draw around. Okay, let's get to it. And once again, it's raining, so a nice time to get into something arty. Starting off by drawing out those circles, switching up the sides, and getting some composition onto the page. I'm not pressing down too hard, but I will want these pencil lines as a guide later. Adding in minimal detail at this stage. Right, I'm happy with that. Time to activate these paints. And I'll be using a spray bottle to do this, as it provides an even application of water. You can, of course, use a wet paintbrush. So trying to grab the water. My trusty jam jar lid doubles up as a palette. The Viviva set actually comes with its own palette attached, and I'll be using that one too. With watercolours, it's ideal to use a lot of water in the beginning stages, working in light washes of colour, then gradually reduce the water as you start to add more details and definition. Wait for each layer to dry before adding a new layer. If you find a white paint daunting, you can add a tonal wash to the background like I'm about to do here. I've added a pop of green into that blue to have a nice turquoisey colour. Onto the first layer, and I'm going to be using a damp sponge for this, simply swiping the paint over the page. This is going to create a nice base layer for me to work from. The sponge allows for some really nice soft edges to the piece, and any ones that I feel are too hard, add a little water onto a paintbrush and you can soften those out. Wait for that layer to completely dry, and now I'm going to go in with my second layer, and I'll be adding a bit more green to this one. Those circles that I've laid down, if you haven't noticed already, are going to be lily pads. So this layer, I'll be adding green where they lay. I'll be covering the whole page again, starting with the blue and just incorporating that green in where I feel like I need it for the lily pads. As this is still the beginning stages, I want that colour to be slightly subtle. Once that's dry, the next layer is where we're going to start incorporating some of that negative painting technique. And this technique is where you paint around the subject rather than the subject. It's a technique that allows us to add more depth and dimension to our paintings. It challenges us to shift our perspective and concentrate on the surrounding negative space rather than the subject itself. So with this, as you can see, some of those lily pads are not included in this first layer. And I've actually painted over them, leaving the ones I want in the foreground unpainted. Another layer dry, and this time, when I go back on top, we're going to go around a few more of those lily pads. It's the same process again, adding in more blue and greens where I feel are appropriate. Deaten up any areas I feel like need softening or are general mistakes, use a wet paintbrush and then dab with a tissue to soak up that extra watercolour. I then decided I wanted to add more green using a wet on wet technique, so the end result is one that dries was quite loose and bloomy. To the next background layer and I want that blue to be a little more intense so I've added some of the purple. This purple helps brighten up that blue a little bit as they're both in the same colour temperature. When you mix two to cool toned colours together the colour mix will be brighter. This palette is quite clean which is incredibly handy. Now I can incorporate the greens and blues into this next layer too.
onto that next layer and I'm adding in little blooms of blue as I go for a bit more of a watery effect. This paintbrush is great for getting into those smaller gaps. I've done this as I've gone along using a wet on wet technique, so those little pops of blue aren't so intense but they're still in there. It's really starting to take shape now, dabbing off any excess water. I'll now add a little bit of definition to my lily pads that are in the background. I'm going to add a little bit more definition to the lily pads by putting in a bit of shading, just using a bit of that darker green and then blending it out with a bit of clean water. This technique is known as glazing and it's where you can create new colours or add shadows by adding over a wash of colour to an already dry area of paint. Just to work quite quickly with this because you don't want it to dry out because then it won't blend as easily. My final layer for the watery background, adding in those little blue blooms as I go again. As it's my final layer, I can add in darker patches now and not worry about having to go back over them. Now once that's dry, I can add in those finishing details and add some character to the piece. The angled paintbrush is one of the most versatile paintbrushes. It's great for mark making. Switch up how you hold it for a variety of different brush strokes, so you can get some really cool effects too. The beauty of watercolour is the vast amount of values you can create just by the amount you dilute your pigment with water. So you can add darker tones or lighter tones, and they all work brilliantly together. Mark making done, let that completely dry and now we can go in with our fine liner. So I'm going to outline these water lilies now by adding in that black just to make them pop a little bit. Again, using the joy of mark making to add some character. Just having fun with layering up these supplies because they work so well together. Once this pen has dried it's completely waterproof so I can go back in with some more paint and add in more little dots and details. I wanted to add a little bit more colour into this picture, so I decided to use the paints, again going back to that values, with the least amount of water possible. So it's a sort of jelly-like consistency, but then that pigment really pops against the page. And to finish off, I'll be using that paintbrush again with the gorgeous blue for an outline, just to tie it all together. Sometimes black can be too harsh, so using a colour you already have in there is a nice way to balance this out. We have it using some tips and tricks as featured in the zine to create this lily pad pond with all the number 95 squirrel box supplies. What was your favourite way to use these paints? Let us know in the comments below. And until next time, scrollers, keep scrolling. <laughs>